Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. This is the 2022 Het News Blonde Beyond the Coverage breakdown of the race itself. Now, by now, you guys all know Wout Van Art solo to a magnificent win for Jumbo Visma. Solo, nonetheless, from 13 kilometers to go. No one could do anything about it. He was spectacular. The best one-day racer on the planet in the galaxy. I can give no bigger praises to Wout Van Art, and I'll go one higher just to make it clear my love for Wout Van Art and watching how exciting of a race he put on on his first race back on the road scene for 2022 at the Classics at Newsblunt. Not only do I consider him the best, but many people, many fans, many viewers, many cycling fans, many people always compare him to the legendary rider Matthew Vanderpool. And I call them legendary. He is. Matthew Vanderpool is a spectacular rider. But guess what? Wout Van Aert is better. It's not even it's not even a comparison. When I see people compare the two, I think it's ridiculous. Yes, they both did cycle cross, so it's easy to compare Matthew Vanderpool with Wout Van Aert. But Wout Van Aert is so much more. They, they do the cycle cross together. They do the one-day classics together. And then that's where it ends. And Wout Van Aert's legendary status far exceeds Matthew Vanderpool. When you're talking about his ability to time trial, his ability to climb the big mountains. I don't mean the, the little tiny bergs. I mean the big, big monstrous mountains in the Grand Tours at the Tour de France. Nonetheless, when I was racing against riders like Peter Sagan, and that is where Wout Van Aert, really I see him there and even higher than what Sagan was. Sagan could climb over the mountains and survive. He'd get dropped and then get back on in the descent. Wout Van Aert goes over these mountains and destroys people when there's five, ten riders left of the best climbers in the world. If I was a bike racer, I was never worried about Peter Sagan. He was in a different class. I Very rarely did we intermix and I have to battle with a rider like that, being that I'm a GC guy. But with Wout Van Aert, that guy would put the fear in my eyes. Right now, if you were racing and I had to go up against him starting one of these big coals, and we're talking about it's stage one, stage two, early in a Grand Tour, and you got to deal with Wout Van Art on form going up the big mountains. So when I dissect Yumbo Visma, when you hear me dissecting Yumbo Visma strategy and stuff, don't think I'm picking on them. They're the best, right? They're the best team in the world. They have the number two rider in the world with Primoz Rogos and the number one one-day classic rider in a stratosphere all on his own, Wout Van Art. I love the guy, but. There's always mistakes being made, and at Het News Blunt, just because you win, there's still mistakes to point out. Now, I'll start right away. They signed Tis Benute, came from DSM. I remember reading an article about Tis Benute, and I'll post it down below, where he was excited to come to Yumbo Visma, because now, all of a sudden, he can start playing strategies and going up the road and trying to win a race. Now, that is perfect for Tis Benute, but that doesn't work for Wal Van Aert. What, what are you going to do, Yumbo Visma, when you send Tis Benute up the road? I'll, I'll answer that question for myself. They're going to say, hey, we have Tis Benute in the front break up there, so we don't have to work. And probably a team will chase, most likely. But if they don't, are you really happy with Tis Benute up the road with a bunch of quick step riders and Walt Van Aert left behind? Guys, bringing Tis Benute on a classic team is a fantastic ideal, but... He doesn't, he shouldn't be given the free card to go up the road in whatever combination works at that moment when you have Wout Van Aert behind. I raced many times for some legendary riders. I was on the team with Alberto Contendor, and there was never a time when they said, hey, we got Chris Horner up in the move up the road there, so you can go ahead and leave Alberto Contador isolated, and we won't work for him. We'll just be happy with Chris Horner up the move. That's never going to happen if you're a GC team. Now, all of a sudden, you're a one-day classic specialist team, and now you're happy with Tis Benut up the road with Wout Van Aert left in the group isolated back there? That's absolutely craziness. But when you read his article from Tis Benut, He's talking about how Yumbo Visma will allow him to go up the road and possibly have a chance at winning a race for himself. Now, this boy is a 
great rider. I mean, he is very good. He's always in the final splits and always putting on some action in the moves, but he can't sprint and he doesn't win bike races. So why would you want Tis Benoot in the front group and Walt Van Aert left behind? Never in my mind. When I bring Tis Benoot to this race, I use him for exactly how they used him in today's race up till 20 kilometers to go. Now when Tis Benoot was splitting the group and just blowing it apart with only Tom Pidcock, Jonathan Navarez, Sonny Cabrelli. Sonny did amazing bridge to come across the Walt Van Art group with Tis Benoot on the front. Those five guys bridge up to the group of six up front and guess what? That group of six that's now just become 11 they're all working together. There is no reason whatsoever if you're Jumbo Visma to start sending Tis Benoot up the road. Now, I'll tell you why it all happened because I want to go back and dissect the Enios train. Now, Enios is back there and those guys are riding aggressive throughout this day. It's Magnus Sheffield putting on solid attacks. At one point in time, Magnus Sheffield's attack rode off the quick step rider. You see his head drop down in the picture. He can't even follow the 19 year old kid as he's on the pedals. But when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, why are you sending Sheffield up the road right now when a break is all the way up the road? You're not gonna go across solo. Let the 19 year old kid gain some experience, stay in the group, fight for position. Let's see how good he is. Instead, they're sending him up the road. And every time you look at the back of the group, it's Hater back there sitting, swinging tail gunner every time throughout this race. I mean, Hater is back at the back end of the group every kilometer of this race. When the picture comes back, he's back there. This is insane. In my mind, Ethan Hader right now is basically, he is the FDJ rider, Thibaut Pino, who couldn't go downhill. Ethan Hader can't ride the front of the group. I don't know what he's doing. At all the times when you see guys attacking at the front, like Turner attacking, Sheffield attacking, Jonathan Navarez attacking, when you see Tom Pedcock going up the road, every time the camera comes to the back, it's Hader back there sitting dead last in the group. Now, you could have brought anybody else to this race that could have helped Tom Pedcock fight for position, stay in a great spot, Jonathan Navarez stay in a good spot, or send Ethan Hader up the road and attack and save Magnus Sheffield for later in the race at crucial moments. Instead, Hader will do nothing in this race whatsoever except for highlight Enos riding at the back of the group throughout the 200 plus kilometers of this race. Now, let's get back up to the action because like I said, Tis Benut attacked, get the group of five that looks fantastic. They bridged up to the group of six up the road everybody's rotating through. This is a fantastic scenario for Jumbo Visma's Wout Van Art. Everybody's do, doing even pulls. We see Sonny Cabrelli pulling through, Ben Healy's pulling through, Morton Holgard from Uno X is the only rider sitting on. Even the movie star rider, Holman, is coming through and taking pulls. And they've been in the break all day long. These three riders, when we're talking Healy, Holman, and Holgard, they have been riding from all the way throughout today's stage. And now at 22 kilometers to go, this is where Enos mess up again. It's Jonathan Navarez. He goes back there at 22 kilometers to go because Holgard won't come through the Uno X rider. What does, of course, Jonathan Navarez do? He opens up a gap. This is what causes the chaos in this group 11. Up until this moment, up until the moment that Enios Jonathan Navarez causes some chaos, that's when everything falls apart in that group. Up until that moment, they have a 30 plus second gap and now there's a little bit of chaos. The Uno X rider closes the gap for Jonathan Navarez. The problem is Walt Van Art swings back behind Jonathan Navarez and the Uno X rider, guess what? He ain't gonna take a pull. He'll close the gap, but he's not gonna take a pull. Now he doesn't take a pull. Jonathan Navarez is in the back. Walt Van Art is in the back and they're not rotating through. Now all of a sudden, everyone that has been rotating through beautifully, and we're talking about Stefan Kuhn from FDJ. He 
was doing great pulls at the front. The Movistar rider was doing great pulls at the front. It was a fantastic, cohesive group until Ian. Enios's Jonathan Navarez messed everything up, and then the next knucklehead move happens when it's Tis Bernut. He's looking over shoulder right. He looks over left. He swings to the left side of the road, looks over again. Sony Cabrelli's there. Finally, he punches it and takes off, and then guess what's happening in the back? You got a solo Bernut up the front. He's only got a 30-second gap on the chasers behind of Quick Step, UAE Team Emirates, AG2R was back there. Trek Segafredo was chasing. And what? What do you think is going to happen, Tis Pernut? This is your time that you're going to win your next big race. Now, you look at his resume. Fantastic rider. It is stacked with top 10 results. But he's got one win. It's Strada Bianca. But that is it, folks. He doesn't have any other wins. And is he going to hold off a 30-second gap to three, four teams back there chasing? No, of course he doesn't. He's out there solo. But the rest of the group, now, they don't want to pull Wout Van Aert along, so they're just going to sit up. Everything comes back together for the famous climb the Muir. It's Tis Benute, whose gap is shrink, shrinking with every pedal stroke. And behind, they're chasing. And then it's Wout Van Aert that hops on the front near the top of the climb. It splits again with Mohoric, the Bahrain victorious rider, throwing down the big effort. And then it all comes back together with Tis Benute. So now look at it. Yumbo Visma, look at what Tis Benute did to you. Wout Van Art, you had a 30-second gap on all the favorites. You had Sony Cabrelli, Tom Pitcock, and Jonathan Navarez to take a look at and be careful of. Sony Cabrelli is incredibly fast, but Sony Cabrelli just barely made that jump to get onto that break and is surviving with every pedal stroke trying the best he can. Now, when we get to the top of the mirror, it all comes back together, and we have the exact same scenario that you had at 20 kilometers to go when Tis Benut attacked. You have it all together, and the only difference is Wout Van Aert has a full group of favorites now with him instead of Sony Cabrelli, Jonathan Navarez, Tom Pidcock taking even pulls with him and be able to light him up. In my book, when you're looking at that tactic from 20 kilometers to go with Tis Benut, there is zero reason to put in that attack. He should have just ridden straight into the Muir. First off, everybody was rotating through except for one small little Uno you know, X team. He was the only one riding through was Morton Holgard. That was it. Everyone else was rotating through. But because of Jonathan Navarro's mistake of trying to get that kid to pull through, it caused chaos. And then because Tis Benut joined this team to look exactly for this scenario to be able to jump away and have a chance at adding another victory to his resume, he makes the mistake. He goes... Now you look at the top when it's all back together with 13 kilometers to go. There's a hesitation. And then it's Walt Van Art that throws in the attack. Nobody wants to cover except for the Lotto Sudo rider. My man, Victor Campanots is throwing in, trying to bring back Walt Van Art on the front. And he does an amazing effort, folks, at this race. Victor Campanots had zero luck. You probably read the stories about him going to altitude training camp in the south of, of Spain for a month staying at the hotel, sleeping at altitude. It's actually not altitude, the hotel, but the room is compressed. And then training at sea level for a month. Now he comes here. He is on absolutely flying spectacular form, my man Victor Campanas. But he has had the worst luck throughout today's first classic race. He was chasing from kilometer 80 all the way to something like 20 kilometers to go. And now he's trying to follow the attack of Wout Van Aert and doing a solid effort. But clearly the legs are paying for all the efforts of chasing, getting caught in crashes, going down himself, having bike changes. He's doing a spectacular ride, but he won't be able to close the gap. And then finally the group behind blows up while Van Art is soloing to the finish. So keep in mind, when I'm talking about Yumbo Visma, when I'm pointing out these tactical mistakes that they've made, you can still win because you have Wout Van Aert. But why waste all that energy attacking and trying to go up moves? Why have guys like Mike Tunison attacking and going up 
and following moves. Why have Tish Benute attack and solo? When the teams get smart to your guys' tactics, Jumbo Visma, you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to be happy with Mike Tunison in a front break going all the way to the line at the classic race. He doesn't have those kind of legs to make it over the climbs. Nathan Van Hoywedunk, he might put on a show. You know he comes from some high quality blood back there, but he doesn't have wins on his resume. And Tish Benute, no matter how quality of a rider he is, he doesn't have wins on his resume. So when you have Wout Van Aert, you got to believe Jumbo Visma, you can't spend the energy riding the front, covering attacks, making attacks, looking after Wout Van Aert, and then for no reason at all when the whole group's riding together, go ahead and blow it up and send Tish Benute up the road. When you had Wout Van Aert in a group 11, with a couple more birds to come to light people up. Instead, look out, Yumbo Visma, because when the other teams figure out when Quick Step come here on fantastic form and bring Julian Alaphilippe back in the picture, and when they come with Evnipool and all their big favorites, you're not going to get away with these tactics when Quick Step's on full force. Here at Het News Blonde, you got a little bit lucky because Quick Step did not come with a full depth of team, especially with Asgreen being just a little bit off and then missing Julian Alaphilippe and Davi De Ballerini for the finish. When you see those guys off of form and missing, that's why Yumbo Visma is able to make so many mistakes. And then with Wout Van Aert being on such form, nobody can stop him. He is the stratosphere marker of all riders here on the planet. And he is the best at the one-day races. So they can make these mistakes and still win solo with him. But when we start talking 250, 260K to go, and Quick Step have a fabulous team. When Enos come with a little bit more depth on their team and not so many young guys, that team's gonna get better. Jumbo Visma, you better clean up your act. If Walt Van Art wants to continue to win big time, look after the guy, keep him fresh as long as you can, and then light him up at the finish of the race when nobody else has got any legs left. It's a simple strategy for Jumbo Visma. You look after maybe one other team. You keep Take a look at Quick Step. Whenever Quick Step attack, have one of your guys follow the attack. But don't attack with, don't attack first. Have them follow Quick Step. Always follow Quick Step. If anything happens and there's a massive break up the road and there's no Quick Step in there and there's no Yumbo Visma, guess what? It's a perfect scenario, Yumbo Visma. You ride the front, Quick Step rides the front, the pace is blazing fast, everybody's getting tired, and while Van Art launches his attack near the finish and solos every one of these big classics that are still on the horizon and still ready to come for 2022. That's my take on Het News Blonde. I hope you guys liked today's edition of Beyond the Coverage, and I'll see you on the next edition real soon. Like and subscribe. I'll see you then.